This is Dr. Bernstein with another session of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. Uh, today we're going to talk about another dehydrating illness, this time fever. Uh, as you know from the prior sessions on dehydrating illnesses, uh, they can be very dangerous for people with diabetes. Uh, it's important to keep your blood sugars normalized while they're occurring, but it's also important to replace the lost fluid. In the case of fever, the fluid is lost through perspiration. Um, there's no special chemical to give you to stop the perspiration, so what we do is um, replace the fluid. Now, unlike the prior situations of vomiting and diarrhea, we don't have to spike the replacement fluid. We don't have to use fluid with electrolytes in it because very little in the way of electrolytes are lost when you perspire. Uh, the important thing, however, is the fluid replacement, and many people with a fe fever just want to sleep because the fever makes you tired. Now, if you have a slave handy who can awaken you every 20 minutes or so to sip a little uh, fluid, could be water, uh, could be diet soda, etc., um, that's fine. You just uh, relax and get woken up uh, to consume the fluid. Someone should record the amount of fluid that you're consuming because it has to be in proportion to your body weight. And we've said before that someone who weighs 140 pounds should consume at least uh, two and a half quarts or liters in the next 24 hours. And um, of course, if your body weight is half that, it would be one and a quarter quarts, etc. cetera. Um, but that's a minimum. Now, what if you live alone and don't have a slave to wake you up? Then you have to get your fever down enough so that you don't fall asleep because you have to stay awake drinking fluid. Now, what can you use to lower a fever? Uh, it's not that easy. The most effective at lowering fever uh, are the NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin, but because you're in danger of being dehydrated, these particular drugs are hazardous. They do affect the kidneys and can have adverse effects if you are already dehydrated. So we don't want to use uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. A drug that you can use is aspirin. Aspirin, uh, you should be aware of two things. One, which is trivial, it gives a false positive test for ketones. Uh, so certainly no value in testing for ketones, but as I told you, in the prior sessions on dehydrating illnesses, there's no value in testing for ketones anyway if you keep your blood sugars normal. And of course, during the fever, you have to keep your blood sugars normal using the methods that we describe in these sessions, but also using the methods described in my book, Diabetes Solution. So I'm assuming that you're keeping your blood sugars normal and uh, you can take aspirin but do not, if you're an adult, do not take more than uh, 12 tablets, 325 milligrams each, in a 24-hour period because the aspirin can affect the liver, causing severe hypoglycemia that can last several days. So you don't overdo the maximum dose, and that would be for a 150-pound person. Um, for smaller people, it's a smaller dose. Um, for real small people, you might take real small tablets. In any event, 
That's uh, a significant hazard of aspirin. Then there's acetaminophen, which uh, is, goes by the popular brand name of Tylenol, which is okay if you do not as- cons- consume more than the recommended dose. For adults, that's 10 325 milligram tablets in 24 hours. The Tylenol in large doses can adversely affect the liver and the kidneys. So you have to be very careful when using tablet, uh, Tylenol, and you have to be especially careful when giving it to children. Now, there used to be a warning about the use of aspirin for children because of uh, a fear of something called Ray's syndrome, but I believe that warning has been withdrawn in the latest studies that I've seen. So uh, the medication, whatever you use for the fever, has to be reduced uh, in proportion to the size. Now, it's unlikely that a child is going to be living alone and having to stay awake to give himself fluid, so it may not be necessary to give him medication to get the fever down. It, It all boils down, in the case of a child, to what's comfortable. You don't want the child to be too uncomfortable. Um, get, having high fevers is commonplace in children, usually not harmful, so uh, it, it's usually not nothing to worry about from a physiologic point of view, but there is the comfort uh, to worry about. Uh, people with fevers who are diabetic can, are, are allowed to eat in my ball game. Uh, They may not feel like eating a whole meal if they're taking insulin uh, for their meals uh, and they only feel like a half a meal, they would take half the protein, half the uh, carbohydrate, and half the insulin, or a quarter, a quarter, and a quarter, whatever they would prefer. Um, People who have diarrhea should not eat and... uh, That's basically what I can tell you about fevers. Uh, They should not uh, produce a major problem if you treat them the way we just described. Good luck, and we'll see you with the next session of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. The bulk of what you've heard on this video Uh, appears in my book, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution, which is available at uh, most internet and local bookstores. It is published by the Hachette Book Group. I'd like to remind you that we have monthly free teleseminars every month at the site AskDrBernstein.net. Doctor is spelt D-R, so AskDrBernstein.net for a free monthly teleseminar. Uh, sign up a day or two in advance so that you get a reserved seat. Good luck and thanks for listening.